Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is February 28, 2023, and we are in the Old Testament, and we are in the book of Exodus, and we are going to read chapter 2, verse 23, to chapter 3, verse 22. All right, so Moses thought he was going to lead his people out. He thought he had a good idea. Turns out that, that he yes, he was right. He was going to lead the people out. Yes, he was right. He was there to save his people. Yes, he was right that the people were being oppressed, but he was wrong about the whole timing of it. He was wrong about his where his ability was to do this because God needs to work with him some more. As he goes off out into the wilderness, he, he becomes a shepherd and he learns how to take care of a flock. And we see that shepherd motif all through here. The good shepherd who takes care of his flock, who feeds them, who protects them, who leads them to safety. So Moses needed a little more work before he was ready to go. So even though sometimes we have the right ideas, if our if our timing and our will is, is ours and not God's, it's not going to work. we got to get fully in line with God. One of the things that we see is the story of the burning bush. Uh, Moses is tending the flocks and he looks up and he sees a bush burning and he realizes that bush is on fire, but it's not actually burning up. That's something i got to go check out. And I, what I love about that is God seems to be thinking, from what he says, that he's been doing this a lot. And it's finally, this is the time that Moses actually looked up and saw it and went, oh, hey, what's that? He says, oh, he, he, now he sees the bush. Now he's ready. Now, I, now he's looking for me. Okay, he's, not, he's not doing his own will. He's looking for me to see what I want. And a conversation between Moses and God. And God establishes that I am God and you are Moses. I am the creator, you are the created. There's still a little bit of questioning from Moses. He's not quite sure what's going on. And God carefully explains to him, yes, you are the one I want. You, no, you don't need to worry about what you're going to say. I'm going to tell you what to say. Who am I? I am. I was, I am, I always will be. We establish that he is God of everything. And we're still in the protestations when this section ends. So we're going to have to leave it at that. And we'll pick that up tomorrow. So let's go ahead and we're going to read Exodus chapter 2, verse 23 to chapter 3, verse 22. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. And they cried out. And their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a brand, bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Pezzarites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to Egypt, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my 
oh, excuse me, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt and the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Pezzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then they will heed your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst, and after he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in your sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. May God bless the ring of his word. May God bless you. Bye.